to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, Mr Big Head. We're in platinum medal country, looking for monsters and monties. Assume the position. We're talking prone rifle shooting on the Holland and Holland stalking course. First, forget hug a hoodie, get behind Graham Downing and mount a muntjack. Muntjac are the marmite of the British deer species. Some declare they're barely a deer at all, more of a rodent, definitely a pest. Others say they're destroying our woodlands and need to be eradicated. Really? They taste great. Well, someone who's very fond of Muntjac is author and journalist Graham Downing. So much so, he's about to launch a new book about Munties. Gamekeepers don't like them, farmers don't like them. Foresters don't like them. Yeah. Conservationists don't yeah, like them. Yeah. Nobody likes them. Yeah, but still, there's a secret. I want to tell you a secret. I like them. <laughs> I think they're cracking deer. Yeah. I think they're really, really exciting deer to stalk. They're very difficult to stalk. Yeah. They're small, um, and in conditions like this, when when the cover's quite high early in the season, they're very hard to spot. Mm. Graham's love of Muntjac extends beyond stalking, and the book includes Muntjac jewellery and cooking. But more about that later. We want to try and catch up with our own Muntjac, so he's invited Roy for a morning stalk around his ground in Suffolk. We've got in here Muntjac and fallow. There are a lot of fallow around, or well, there were last time I was here three weeks ago. Unfortunately, I didn't see a buck on that occasion, I saw lots of does. But if we see a buck, uh, and it's shootable uh, and it's safe then we shoot it. Graham likes to arrive early to let the furry woodland folk settle around him. Unfortunately we disturb a muntjac buck just inside the wood who tells the whole county that it's got company. As dawn breaks Roy and Graham get flashes of this feisty animal. However it's not stupid and gives neither Roy nor Graham a chance. Next up is an indecisive fallow. Then a fox with purpose. Still no muntjac, but there are clearly bucks here as Graham collects their tusks in his special muntjac tin. And if you want to age your buck, here's how. This is a this is a young buck. You can see that the the root of the of the tusk of the of, of the tooth is open. It's going to be like that until between three to five years, and then it starts. Uh, to close over, let's find one that's, that's an old one. It's starting to close, there's a good one. At about the age of three to five years, uh, this gap is starting to narrow. And then uh, when it gets to old age, as you can see, uh, the root of the tusk has closed completely. And there's just a little pinhole there. Probably over five years, more like six or seven years old. That's another old one. Again, the root of the tusk completely closed over. Graham guides us over his ground. We cut through a ride, taking our time. Out on the other side, Roy spots fallow, but there are some much closer. You get the chance. It's like we've walked out in front of the 2.30 at Epsom. The bucks charge across the field. Moments later, more join the charge, and they are stopping for no one. Click it. Oh. Oh. We must have walked right past those bucks on the ride, and we weren't very far away from them. They just came out to the edge of the wood, and when they realised their problem, they cleared off. Yeah, they certainly weren't stopping for anything. They weren't, no. We blame ourselves, but the behaviour would suggest a Fenton moment. Maybe they were being chased. The wood needs to calm down, so we ask Graham about the barking buck we had come across earlier. He stood back in the wood, probably about 30 yards and you could hear him standing and barking yes, so, he was stationary. so he was stationary but I knew from his barking that although he was alert he wasn't panicked yeah. there was no option really but to move on no. but what he then did is to come out in front of us to take a look, take a look and keep checking and us, keep yeah. checking us. Yeah, I mean, four, yeah. four or five times he actually came yeah. out yeah, he did he did and it was a good buck as well yeah it was a nice park. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, well that's it. You don't uh, you don't get good by being <laughs> stupid, do you? So. To add to our species list this morning we see a row with her young, but no shooting opportunities. 
Back to Munchak, and Roy wants to know how well the Munchies are faring in the UK. The range is steadily increasing. Yes, indeed, the whole of the southeast of England uh, is Munchak country now, and the Midlands um, stretching down to the southwest and probably up uh, uh, as far as as far as Yorkshire. Have you heard of uh, any uh, any outbreaks of population up in Scotland yet? There have been rumours, um, and certainly the occasional Munchak has been supposedly seen in Scotland, but I think the, the, the biggest uh, jump is to Northern Ireland. I mean, they are now established in Northern Ireland, that's for certain, yes. yes. Finally, Graham selects a spot he thinks is suitable for a call. It's all about maximising your chances. Ideally, what we really want is 50, 60 yards back. We want really thick, dense holding cover. So that you've got the wind coming from them to you. You've got they can't go beyond you because that's the edge of the wood yeah. and they don't like going off the wood. You've got a nice, decent backstop. That, that's the scenario that really is the ideal one for, for calling. Although we haven't been able to get onto a muntjack this morning, this is a bronze medal Graham shot a few years ago. He calls it the Valentine's Buck as his wife's perfume pushed it into Graham's path on Valentine's Day, which may explain the necklace made of 80 pairs of muntjack tusks. Oh, every girl should have one. It's a lot of stalking. It's a lot of stalking. It's a lot of muntjack. <laughs> when you think that, uh, you know, an old buck is probably bound to have at least one broken tusk. Um, yeah, it takes a long time to amass that sort of number of particularly the longer ones, they're the difficult ones to get. Muntjac are a great deer and generate lots of business for the UK stalking industry. We just need to make sure they are managed properly, just like all our species, native and alien. We're lucky to have them. Graham is launching his book at the Midland Game Fair 2014. For more information, go to grahamdowning.com. Good effort, men. And if you want to see Roy having more fun calling Munjack, click on the screen that's magically appeared up there behind me. Now, someone else who enjoys being squeaked up. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. You won't get a little help from a Halifax if you're a shotgun or firearm certificate holder in the UK. The home insurance arm of the Halifax has refused to offer household insurance to Suffolk-based disabled champion clay pigeon shooter Sam Nunn of Essex. Happily, thanks to the publicity surrounding the incident, Halifax's owner, Lloyd's Banking Group, has realised they made a mistake and have apologised to Mr Nunn and is offering him insurance cover if he still wants it. The American state of Maine is to hold a referendum on bear hunting. In November, they'll decide whether bear hunting with traps, hounds or overbait should continue. Happily, the state game warden service has come out in favour of keeping bear hunting, as this film shows. If we lose these means of hunting, we're going to see an increase in bears in backyards. We'll see an increase in human conflict. Medway Council is to give planning permission to a new housing estate on a site of special scientific interest, which is home to 150 nightingales. The builders say they will rehome the birds in Essex. Presumably, the new home will include areas of tropical Africa, to which nightingales migrate each winter. A poaching conviction is proving to be a headache for producers of a new Megabuck movie. The money men behind new Bollywood epic Kick have had to re-script scenes filmed in London with its star Salman Khan because a 1998 conviction for hunting black buck in Rajasthan means he can't get a visa to travel to the UK. There's a new pronghorn record. The American antelope was shot in New Mexico in 2013 by Mike Gallo. It's just been ratified by Boone and Crockett at 98 and 4 eighths, beating the previous record by a full inch and a half. Deer caused a traffic snarl up on the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. In a scene not even slightly reminiscent of when simians take over the bridge in the recent Planet of the Apes movie, despite what some local newspapers claimed, they were driven from the bridge by a man on a motorbike. And finally, Russian sunbathers got a wild boar surprise. A sow and her piglets came to forage for food among holidaymakers on the Koronian Spit in the Baltic, close to Kaliningrad. After successfully begging food from picnickers, they made off into the sand dunes. 
You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, let's see who's been doing what, where it's Hello, Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Reese here in Gloucestershire. Just thinning out the rubber, rubber pig population. Hello, Charlie. Simple Simon here. It's my birthday today, and I thought there was no better way to spend the day than coming out to this high seat and... Uh, trying to get a nice fellow to take on for the table. Hello Charlie, it's Will from Suffolk, clearing up the foxes. Hello Charlie, I'd like to think I'd be out shooting today, but no, I've got to have a day off and get married. Cheers mate, see you next time I make with a gun. Send us your own Hello Charlie, film yourself on your mobile phone, just a sentence saying Hello Charlie, who you are and what you're up to. Then share it or email it via YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox or you send it, you name it, to charlie at fieldsportschannel.com. TV. Now let's go to Holland and Holland's shooting ground for some rifle shooting tips. The complete rifle shooter should be confident in taking that shot safely and accurately from all sorts of stable positions. In the Holland and Holland stalkers course they cover high seat sticks and the prone position. Do it properly and shooting prone with a bipod can mean the difference between a successful stalk and coming off the hill empty handed. It complements your field craft allowing you to remain undetected. Things we'll be watching out for when in the prone position is there is nothing in front of the muzzle that can cause a bullet deflection. Coming back from there, that there's nothing touching the barrel. So for example, if you do use your day sack, your, your piece sack, it's not touching the barrel once again to interfere with the harmonics, which can also affect bullet strike. Moving back further, a special attention on eye relief, eye scope relief, the different position, effectively lying down, can change that eye scope relation. We need to make sure that Steve has a full window in the scope and that he's no risk of bumping his eyebrow with that scope. Hand position is looking good. The hand is in a good position, nice and solid. Elbows firmly planted on the ground and he's locked the stock into his shoulder with his left hand as before. Steve's also put his body at a slight angle here which will help massively with, with, uh, with recoil absorption, allows him to breathe easier and more controlled because that can have a direct effect on um, trigger pull and, and bullet strike. He's also bent his knee here to lift up the lower abdomen so it's more comfortable. When in this position, Steve has a very good, solid, stable firing position which will lead to consistent shooting. If you want more information about the course, go to hollandandholland.com. Now, the chalky downlands of Hampshire are home to monster roebuck, but to keep the monster, do we need to get rid of the muntjac? In Twins, the movie where Danny DeVito and Arnie are supposed to be brothers, Danny is the assimilation of the rubbish DNA, whereas Schwarzenegger bags all the quality genetic material. Well, this ground in Hampshire is like the volcanic island where Arnie was created, without the steroids of course. This is where some of the world's best roebucks are produced and according to deer manager Richard Scroop, it's down to nature and nurture. This particular bit of ground here is a very, very good shoot as well. So there's ample food supply from the, from the feed for the pheasants for the roebucks all year round, which uh, helps provide them with the nutrients that they need during the period of the year where their antlers are growing. Also here we have, we have incredibly strong genetics in this part of the world to create the large heads that you, you see in the record books year after year coming out of Hampshire. Of course, Richard has a lot to do with which genes live to fight another day. But this beautiful estate is going to appeal to any self-respecting deer, not just Roe. Is he a fan of the fallow and the muntjac? On this estate, we, we're focused very heavily on roebuck. Um, so I have a zero, zero tolerance policy to, uh, to the muntjac and to the fallow. Yeah, um, we get very good row heads here and, and to achieve that you need to have as little competition as possible for the row. So yeah, in essence, no, I'm not a, not a fan. Oh dear, no muntjac love here. From the high seat we hear a muntjac buck behind us, but when we arrive 
he's gone all sheepish on us. Then we spot a roe doe, get quite close to a hare. The weird misty morning is not helping and it means we can't enjoy what is a very impressive shoot. They're putting down guinea fowl here for the first time, which double up as a good early warning system for foxes. Richard now suggests we head off piste. Instead of gently walking down the rides, we pick our way through the bramble and thick undergrowth. But there's method in his madness. We get within just a few metres of a monster buck. Well, here's his bottom. And six others, 40 yards on. There's no way we'd have seen them from the track, so we needed to take the party to them. We've just encountered about six fallow bucks, about 10 metres away from us. They were they were couched up as, as we approached. They just stood up and they were gone. There's nothing, nothing we can really do in these conditions. Um, but it's making for some interesting stalking. As we know, Richard is not interested in the fallow, although a client shot this big boy in the rut last year. Richard has worked really hard for us this morning, but the deer just aren't moving. And lastly, how beautiful is the view behind us? Amazing. Absolutely stunning. Shame you can't see it. If you'd like a chance of a world-class row or indeed all sorts of sporting opportunities here and abroad, go to Richard's website, vtsporting.com. Beautiful scenery there now from Chalk Valleys to the wider world of hunting on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Ah, oh, copyright, copyright. You can watch some lovely films on YouTube, but best not ask too closely where they come from. Russian channel Hunting Videos TV is putting out what looks like a Russian-made American-style English-speaking series called Boars and Hunters that's also available at $12 a pop on Vimeo. More boar hunting clips that I have to ask, does he have all the rights for? From 9anasarab.tv. This is Top 10 Shoots Hunting Batu Song and under one reading of YouTube's regs, it's a quality mashup. More good quality TV that carries the message no copyright infringement intended fair use. First aired on Australia's landline programme, you can now watch this pest control piece thanks to Aussie LAFO, though it's hard to know how long for. Delighted though I am that I can watch this film in the UK, next time I go carjacking I shall be wearing a t-shirt that says no infringement intended fair dinkum. More wild boar, this film is a one hit wonder, literally, a French hunter has his pride ruffled when a pig charges him. It does not end well for the beast, however. Waffenland TV is hunting roe deer in Germany in September. It's a well-shot, moody piece about stalking. I do keep plugging Keith Warren, but he does keep producing great YouTube films. Girl drops black buck at over 300 yards, has his much-loved daughter stacking up her nickname Dead Eye Matty. There's a big lurcher scene in Chile in Jose Gatica. Celebrates the 2014 season, out with the familiar Gatica with this wobbly film. Let's hope someone gives him a tripod for Christmas. And finally, where Where's Max Hunt? You may well ask. He has re-emerged. Next stop of Vladivostok, part two, Russia and Mongolia has him explaining how he has run the gauntlet of civil war in the Ukraine on his way from Finland to Alaska. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, if none of those tickle your fancy, here's what's on offer from Fishing Britain. We are approaching the witching hour. Yes, an evening rise on a small still water. There's nothing better. The fish are starting to feed. They haven't fed all day, so they're really hungry. They're gonna come out in the last hour before it gets dark. And then hold on to your hats. There'll be fish boiling all over. And if you want to see how we get on, watch Fish in Britain this Friday, 7 p.m. here on Field Sports Channel. And it's Schools Challenge TV week. 
In Schools Challenge TV this week, the British shooting talent scouts are looking for the next Peter Wilson. The Oxford gun company Clayground is hosting a British Shooting Olympic Experience Day to tempt the next stars of GB shooting out into the open and give them a chance to showcase their talents in front of the sport's top selectors. Naturally, the Schools Challenge is out in force, especially the Schools Challenge Academy members. Watch them battle it out in this souped-up DTL competition where the winners might, just might, be the young men and women you see ascending the podium at the 2020 Olympic Games. That's it for this week. We're back next week. Please subscribe or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into our constant contact form and we'll constantly contact you about our programme that's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. Indeed, all our programmes. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye.